Today I, I want to start a, um, a series um, and I want to go through the way of salvation and I, I do this normally once a year. Uh, I think I have the wrong congregation today. I, I think uh, you all look very saved to me. You all look very, uh, very saved. Um, I don't see too many seekers here. I don't see too many people who uh, haven't come to Christ. So, um, uh, but I've got the right congregation, not the wrong <laughs> congregation. Please don't get me wrong. Please come back. Um, but, um, but you know, there, there are some people I also wish wish um, were here. Um, Salvation today is very often that you come to a meeting and uh, you hear a, a good sermon about how God loves you, um, about how, um, you know, if you've got any problems, you just bring them to Jesus and, um, you know, God, God, God accepts you as you are and He really loves you and, and He's got a plan for your life and everyone's th sitting there thinking, wow, God's got a plan for my life, that's great. I've got a plan for my life. And then at the end, you give the invitation. If you want to have Jesus in your heart, you want all your problems to go, you want to, you know, you, you, you want to live this wonderful, victorious life, then please come forward. And nothing is said about sin, the fall of man, the fact that we are totally depraved in our heart. The heart is deceitfully wicked above, uh, above all things. Very little is said about the need for repentance. Um, it's just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's only part of it. Um, Jesus, Paul, Peter all said repent and believe. And so I want to start really right at the beginning. Um, and I really should be starting at the beginning with, with God. And so I'm not exactly starting right at the beginning. I'm starting with um, the creation of man and that we're created in the image of God. And I want to have a look very briefly today, it won't be a long sermon, um, but I just want to look at what it means today, as well as what it meant to Adam and Eve before the fall, to be created in the image of God. We'll just have a word of prayer. Father, open our eyes, open your word to our hearts. And Lord, if there is anything from my lips that is not of you, anything, Lord, where I've honestly made a mistake, then I pray that you will take those words and that they will be quickly forgotten so that it, the only thing that remains will be your word and Jesus only. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, so we're going right to the beginning. I, I will be obviously speaking about God because it was God who created us. And to be in the image of God, we've got to know really um, something about God himself. Um, otherwise, how would we know what image we are supposed to be um, created in? Um, the Bible reading is Genesis chapter 1, um, from verse 26 to 31. Genesis chapter 1. From verse 26 to 31. And I'm reading from the, uh, the ESV, the English Standard Version, but if you have the Revised Standard Version, even better. Or you have the King James, or the New King James, or the NIV, um, it is still the Word of God. But I'm reading from the ESV. Verse 26, Genesis 1. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, 
I've given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Very interesting that um, it appears very clearly, um, until after the fall of man, that man was created a vegetarian on all the Seventh-day Adventists say, Amen. Um, but it's quite interesting, it seems also that the, the animals were vegetarian because it says, and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I've given every green plant for food. So I like the idea of, uh, of lions eating leaves and not people, of, uh, you know, of, uh, of, of cobras and, um, and uh, you know, black mammas in, in Africa um, eating berries and not biting. Uh, uh, I like that idea and I'm looking forward to um, the day when um, once again the lamb will lie down with the lion and the little boy will put his hand in a, in a serpent's um, um, hole and, and, and not get bitten. So I'm really looking for that, um, that, 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 that creation being restored again. But God has given us permission to eat meat as well. Um, and if your conscience is okay with that, then so am I. On the last day of creation, God created mankind in his image. It, it is a tremendous truth. It is a, a tremendous blessing because it separates man from every other created being, every other created animal, every other created insect or fruit or berry or tree. Man is created in the image of God. Now I'm a great animal lover. I have, um, I have my new pussy cat and she's getting bolder and bolder every day. She's still a real scaredy cat, but she's getting gradually getting bolder and we love her to bits. She, she rules the house and, uh, and when she comes out, we, 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 we we, no, we don't want to frighten her, and, and she gets her food, and she gets her water, and, and we clear up her, 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 her mess and, and everything. And, and, and she, like any animal I would ever have, um, has me round her little finger. Um, just as I love Bertie to bits, so, um, so um, little Ayla is also really you know, getting into our hearts big time. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm English and uh, we are probably the silliest animal lovers outside of America. Um, and, um, and, and I love animals, you know, I put flies out of the window and, uh, and even, even wasps, I try and get them out, you know. And, uh, and, you know, I don't tread on spiders, I get them on a piece of paper and, uh, and, and put them out. And, and it's just the way I am, okay? If you, if, you are, um, if you are a spider catcher, that's okay. I have no problem with that. It's just the way I am, I'm, am made, you know. Um, but, you know, my pussycat and the spiders that I put out and the little insects and the dogs and the lions are not created in the image and likeness of God. And this is the last day. God finished the work of creation with a very personal touch. Incredibly pers personal. Let us make man and woman in our image according to our likeness. And God then performed this miracle, if you believe in, in creation, um, and um, you know, it doesn't matter whether you, whether you believe six day creation and the day of rest, or whether you believe in the period of, of, of time, um, but if you believe in creation, then God formed man from the dust of the earth, and then did something amazing. He breathed life into man. Not just the life of a living creature, he'd done that already, but he breathed his own life into man. God breathed the life of himself. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. And then he took the rib from the man and he created the woman, um, a living being, created in his image, created after 
his likeness. And we must remember that every day, particularly as Christians, we must remember that we are created in the image of God. We are created in the likeness of God. Man is created unique, and woman is created unique among all God's creation. Having a material body, but a soul stroke spirit that is like God's. We have a physical body. That is not being made in the image of God. God is spirit. And we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. We are to worship God not so much with our bodies, although we do that, we clap, we sing, we, we dance, um, but um, with, with our spirit we, we worship God because He is spirit. So having the image and the likeness of God means that we were created to resemble God. We're not created to be God, but we are created to resemble God. Adam, as I said, did not resemble God in a physical sense, because God is spirit. If you want the verse, John 4, 24. John 4, 24. Um, I believe it's when Jesus is with the, the, um, the Samaritan woman, and um, God is spirit. But even in our human bodies, even in their human bodies, Adam and Eve were created to live in perfect health. And they were not subject to death. So even in the original creation of man, even in the physical creation of man, there was something of God. In that they were created not to die. They were created to have perfect health, no sickness, there was no sin at the time, and they were not subject to death. Now, I know there are a lot of different views of, of sickness. Sickness came into the world through sin. Before there was sin, there was no sickness. It doesn't mean that uh, because um, you have been fighting the flu and colds and goodness knows what else, that you have been sinning particularly um, this week. Um, we are subject to the elements now that contain bacteria, they contain uh, you know, harmful uh, germs, and we, are, and we are subject to that. We are subject to ageing. I, I realise that every year. If you, when I was 25, if you had told me I was subject to ageing, I would have said yes, and it would have gone in one ear and out the other because I would have looked at myself in the mirror and uh, um, there wouldn't have been you know, a, 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 a grey hair, every, every hair was black, and uh, I, I was probably at the peak of, uh, of, uh, of myself. Uh, so, what I'm saying is after 25, <laughs> it's all downhill. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But what I, what I am saying is that we're subject to ageing and we are subject to death. But originally, there was something of God even in the physical Adam and Eve. But the real sense of the image of God refers to the, the immaterial, the, the, the spiritual side of man. And that's what I want to look at today, the spiritual side of man and woman. Because it sets man apart, as I said, from the creation around him. And it fits him for the dominion God intended him to have over the earth. Genesis 1.28 again. And God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. It's really good so far. Man created in the image of God, woman created in the image of God, was enabled to commune with the Creator. And the image of God is a likeness to God. And so it includes being like Him mentally, you know, in, 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 in thinking, in, within reason, creating, creative ability, and then morally, 
understanding things like truth and justice and righteousness and social. Because God is one God in three persons. And just as we love to be with our closest friends and we love to be in TIC and we love to have friendship and fellowship with each other. So the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who are one God in three persons have, have enjoyed this, this absolute, this perfect fellowship from, um, from eternity to eternity because they are without being and of course without beginning and of course with, without end. And so we're created a social uh, being. So what does it mean to be created mentally in the image of God? To be honest, I haven't got a clue. Um, because um, I don't even, you know, I don't know God. God is so other. This is another of our teachings. That God is so other than man. He is so separate from his creation that uh, it is almost arrogant for me to dare to, to preach a sermon like this and say, well, God is like this. And therefore, because we are like this, you know, um, we, we have that image, that likeness of God. But I, I will try, okay, because God in his word has revealed certain attributes of his um, mentality, of his creative ability, of, uh, of uh, um, this, this great universe. It gives us some idea of... Uh, of, uh, of God's um, mental being. But then also God is a moral being and, and we know something of his holiness. We know something of his righteousness. We know something of his love. And then, as I said, God is, a, um, God is social because of the fellowship, the perfect fellowship of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So mentally, well, first, man has been created, he's been created a rational being. We have the ability to evaluate. We have the ability to rationalise. Now, now, without the spiritual side of man, um, it, it can be a terrible curse. Because, you know, the, the, the image of God has been marred, all but destroyed, but it is still there in some way. So man is created a rational being. And, um, and I'll underline this because I've heard some strange things about what we're supposed to believe in this church, um, locally around us. Man has a genuine free will. Okay, underline that. Man has a genuine free will. We believe that we have a genuine free will. In the Reformed Church, we believe that man has a genuine free will. And I operate it all the time. Um, I started with the, the microphone in here. I have my own free will. God didn't, you know, God didn't force me to do it. I took the microphone because I, I find it easier in, the, in my, my hand. When I go to the, the, uh, uh, the supermarket, I, I, I make some amazing decisions with my free will. I choose Weetabix over cornflakes. I choose whole milk over semi-skin. Oh, semi-skin, that's not milk. So I choose whole milk over semi-skin. I choose my bread. I, I, you know, I have free will. And we have this genuine free will. Um, my cat doesn't have a free will. My cat gets what I, I give her. Now, thankfully, she likes it. Well, in a way, they do have a free will because they don't drink milk, you have to give them water. But they don't have a free will in the way that we have a free will. We have a genuine free will. We make choices from who we marry, what job we do, um, what studies we take. Now, we should be led by God. We should want God to, to, um, you know, to confirm our calling. But if you are gifted you know, with music and you can... You can you know, get on the piano and, 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 and play Mozart or Beethoven's Fifth. Um, you know, if you could, if you could, you know, um, uh, uh, paint, you know, a, a painting equal to, to the Mona Lisa, then I would, I would consider that, that maybe you can use that talent for God, make money and tithe to the church and we'll all be, be happy. Man can reason. Man can choose. This is a reflection of God's intellect and freedom. There is a freedom that we have. Now that freedom before the fall was perfect. Since the fall, that freedom has some real, um, you know, some real bad choices that are made today. 
We look at the, the abortion rate, and we, we look at um, you know how how man can choose to lose his temper or not. How man can have that freedom to 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 be corrupt or the freedom to to, to be holy. Every time man invents a marvelous machine like the Audi 80, uh, every time that man creates um, a, 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 a new computer or, 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 or a new phone, it, it drives me mad. But for you younger people, that's wonderful. You know, you have an app. I don't know what app means. You, know, I mean, you, have, you have different apps now, and, and everybody's trying to compete with everybody else to produce the mobile phones. Um, and when they can get the, the, when the battery manufacturers can can compete with that technology, you know, we'll have the perfect mobile phone. And, but this is, comes from man. Man writes a book. Woman writes a book. My favourite book, my favourite book of, of books, apart from the Bible, because I know I'm going to get that in, in, in the neck after if I don't see the Bible. My favourite book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I just love it. I'm a real romantic, okay, but I, I just love that book. It's probably not the best book that's ever been written, but uh, it is a book that I, I really love. And Charlotte Bronte wrote that book. And she painted that picture of, of, of Joan Eyre. Man paints a landscape, enjoys a symphony, calculates a sum, names a pet, Bertie, Ayla, Pussu. And Every time we do that, we're proclaiming the fact that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Um, I just very, very quickly um, uh, printed out a couple of my favourite paintings. My favourite painting of all, fa of all paintings is um, when they don't lend it out. I don't like it when they lend, lend it out. I actually went to the National Gallery in London and it wasn't there. It had been lent out to, to Holland of all places, you know. And, and uh, like, God bless Holland, okay. And it's, it's Renoir's The Umbrellas. I love this painting. I, I know nothing about art. I went to the National Gallery because I had a, a chap at work who thought that uh, he could educate me by sending me to the National Gallery. I didn't know what I was going to find. I was about... Well, I would have been about 22 years of age. I went to the National Gallery and I stood in front of this painting, uh, much bigger, you know, and I mean, oh, I love it. And it's been, I think, my favourite painting. Renoir has this wonderful, wonderful um, way of, of, of painting colour and, 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 and action and, and joy, and, and all his ladies are, 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 and, and his men are men, his ladies are ladies, and, and I just love uh, Ray Martin. I love this painting, and, um, and there's a, a, another of his. I mean, these are masterpieces, and, and without knowing a thing about art, I mean, I just stood in front of this painting, absolutely transfixed, and, and a number of other paintings and, uh, as, as well. And I went back and I told, I told my the man who worked there. He was, he was. So pleased because he said, "Wow!" He said, "You've you've you've looked, you've chosen some of the best paintings that have ever been painted, and the, they are amongst the greatest paintings in the National Gallery." I knew mean, nothing about art, but there was something about this that was magnificent. There was a, another painting called um, the the An Angelus. Um, it's a very famous painting. Again, it's French and it's um, it's kind of impressive. And it's of a, a farmer and his wife, and they're praying. Over, um, over their crops, uh, praying that God will bless their, their crops. It's, it's a great painting. I, I, I love this. I've only got prints of it, but uh, I would love to be able to buy it. And, and, um, but, and I thought, well, I can't, can't have paintings without a Filipino artist. Okay. So this is Fernando Amor Solo, and uh, he's, he's a, the famous Philippine artist. And I like this one. This is called Afternoon Meal Under the Mango Tree. So you know it's not Finnmark, okay? <laughs> Afternoon Meal Under the Mango Tree. It's just beautiful. It's, it's lovely. It's, it's colourful and, it's, and she's very... She's got a little child and everything's good, you know. And, and, and uh, it's probably not anywhere near, near real life, but, um, but it shows what man can do. It shows that mentally man can create in a 
pathetic, um, distant, um, just copy of God's creation. But man is immensely gifted. And it was, you know, I would love to paint like that. I can't. I would like to be able to um, uh, play concertos. I can't do that. I would like to be able to uh, do you know, something like that. But even if we can't paint to that degree, there are things that we can do that uh, are, it's real class. It's real class. All of us can. Morally, man was created in perfect righteousness and perfect innocence. Some theologians say that man was created um, sinless. Um, I think he was, he was created without sin, um, but he was created with the ability to, to sin. But he was created in perfect innocence. When we are tempted and we sin, we are under a real strong temptation. I don't know what your sin is. I'm certainly not telling you mine this afternoon. Um, but we all have our own temptations. We all have those weaknesses. When we sin, we think, oh, I've done it again. I've done it again. Either with our tongues or with our bodies or with our minds. Um, you know, we go in on the, the internet and, and, and some of us are tempted more than others. And, 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 we, and that temptation often leads to sin. Adam and Eve had no such temptation. When they sinned against God, there was absolutely no pressure, no stress, no temptation. They did that because they wanted something that they didn't have. They didn't just want to be created in His image and, and according to His likeness. They wanted to be God. They wanted to be equal with God. But man was created Innocent, righteous, and a reflection, it is a reflection of God's holiness. God saw all that he had made, including mankind, and in Genesis 1, 31, said it's very good. It's very good. So man and woman are created very good. Our conscience or our moral compass is a reminder of that original state. We all have a feeling of righteousness. We all have a feeling of justice or injustice, as the, the case may be. I get very angry when I see injustice. I have um, taught, or uh, I am Marilyn as well, Mar Marilyn uh, and I have always taught our children um, about justice, to live justly. And so our children always grew up with this sense of, of justice. And therefore they got, they got very upset, even at school, uh, when they saw injustice. Now none of us are perfectly just. I get upset about injustice and then I do the very same thing myself. But it does show us that even with our marred, sinful nature, we have a, a feeling of justice, a feeling of what is right and what isn't right. And sometimes we get very upset because things just aren't right. Society just isn't right. And even though this comes from a, a very marred human uh, uh, picture, it does show that um, in our original state, we would ha have had an, a, a, an understanding of justice and an understanding of what was right. Where they went wrong was choosing that tree. That God, God didn't, didn't bar that one tree uh, for, for nothing. He said that uh, that tree would give man the ability to choose between good and evil. But the problem was, in taking of the tree, he fell and no longer had we that ability, perfect, to choose good and evil. And so now we judge, we misjudge, we... We, we, we think we know, and sometimes we spread rumours, sometimes we spread uh, uh, lies, sometimes we think that what we're saying is true, only to find out later that what we thought was true 
wasn't true. And it's all down to that tree. It's all down to the fact that I cannot and do not have perfect judgment. I make mistakes. I judge people too, too harshly. I judge people um, uh, you know, and, and, and maybe uh, too, too softly. Um, and it's so hard today to have perfect just, justice and even to be able to, to operate as Christians perfectly just and perfectly righteous because we still have that sinful nature. Whenever a person writes a good law, there are some good laws. There are some good laws. Some bad ones, but there's some good ones. Or we recoil from evil. We praise good behaviour. Or we feel guilty. It's um, confirming the fact that we're made in God's image. We feel guilty because somehow we know that what we are thinking, what we have done, what we have said wasn't right and therefore we feel guilty. Now the problem is we are born with such a sinful nature that sometimes we feel guilty when we shouldn't feel guilty uh, because we are just totally, um, we, we, we're just totally um, uh, de depraved and sometimes you know, we're, we're feeling guilty when we shouldn't feel guilty and sometimes we're not feeling guilty when we should feel guilty but, but guilt it really confirms the fact that we are made in God's image and we do not any longer conform to that image. I'll go on to the last one. Socially. Man was created for fellowship or friendship. Um, I, like, I like the word friendship. I know that fellowship is more spiritual. But, uh, but, but you know, uh, you know, you know, I mean, we get to my brother, I'll have fellowship with your brother, but I, I'm not going to be your friend. No, no. <laughs> Friendship and fellowship should be the same. It's a, it's a love that we have for one another. See what love they have for one another. By this will all men, shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so we're created for fellowship. This reflects God's triune nature. As I said, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in Eden, man's primary relationship was his relationship with God. But God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Genesis 2, 18. It's not good for the man to be alone. And God created the woman because of that. Before the fall. I mean, woman's not a, a result of the fall. Woman was, was made because God saw that even though man is created in the image of God and in the likeness of God and has perfect fellowship with, with God, something was lacking. Something was, was needed. And, and God, of course, God knew this from the foundation of the world. And, and he said it's not good for the man to be alone. And so he created um, woman. And every time someone marries, every time a woman gives birth to a baby, every time we hug a child or we make a friend or we attend church, we're showing that we're made in the image and likeness of God. That's why, um, you know, a, a home, you know, it often, you know, we want children. Because we want to share the, the fellowship with, 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 with children. We, we want to fill our home with, with people. I can remember in, in, the, in the 50s when my mum and dad would, would have, have celebrate Christmas together. And all the aunts and uncles would come and, and they would spend two days together. And it, you know, it didn't matter that some of the men would sleep on the floor or on the settee. The, the ladies always got the beds. And, you know, <laughs> male chauvinist days. You, you did all that okay, actually. And, um, and, um, you know, it, it was a great social occasion. I, I can remember the, the, the evenings that uh, my mum and dad would have friends around and we, we had a we had a, a snooker table, slate bed snooker table. It wasn't full size, but, a, but it was really great. And I used to play hours on this. You know. But it's because we need one another. We need friends. Loneliness is one of the biggest curses of our time. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about loneliness, but it's a terrible curse. There are many men who are lonely because they want a woman to, to have fellowship with, to have friendship with, and to share their lives together. And, and ladies, I expect it's the same with some, some ladies because we are made to, to have um, 
to, to have fellowship and friendship and, uh, with one another. And even if you say, no, no, I'm going to be single. I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. You're probably about 18 or 12. No, no. Uh, yeah. But even if you really want to be single, for, you, you, you'll still have friends. You'll need friends. You'll need, you'll need people around you. And it, and it shows that we are social beings because God is a social being. God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit in perfect harmony, perfect fellowship is, a, is the, the perfection of what we have uh, very limited. I know it's good to be on our own sometimes. Five minutes. <laughs> no, no. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just nice to, to, to chill out and you know, read your favourite book or, 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 you know, you know, watch a football match on TV and, 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 uh, and, and, and so yes, there, there are times when it's good to be on our own, but, but we're not created to, to live alone. We're created to be social. Not because it's in us, but because it's in God and it's been created in us. Part of being made in the image of God is that Adam had the capacity to make free choices. And although Adam and Eve were given a righteous nature, they made an evil choice. To rebel against the Creator, who had given them such perfection to man. And in so, in do, in, in, in so doing, they marred the image of God in their lives. They marred. And then they pass that on to the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. Damaged. The likeness marred. And it's been passed on to all generations. Romans 5 verse 12. Romans 5 verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. You know, even if we don't believe in God, even if we don't believe that God uh, you know, you know, created anything, you know, it's just all by, by, by blind chance. We don't believe in, in God at all. Um, we, we still um, understand that there's right and wrong. We still understand that sin is sin. You know, we, we go, well, we're just animals. We're just animals. And so we shouldn't expect anything more. We're, we're no more uh, made in the image of God than, uh, than, than ants or wasps or you know, think of your worst nightmare. You know, um, mine would be a snake. You know. We're no more created in, in the image of God than they are. Now, that's fine until someone steals their car. And then we're no longer animals. You know, that man should have known that better. That, that, you know, so there, there is a moral conscious. There, there, there is a, a, a consciousness of, of good and evil, even if we claim that, we, uh, that we're animals. Because to me, if we're animals, then we might just as well behave um, like the animals. Sometimes we behave even worse, I believe. But we still today bear the image of God. James 3. And verse 9. James 3, verse 9. Talking about the tongue. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. Who not were, but who are made in the likeness of God. And so it is still there. We still bear this image. Even when we are, you know, before we come to faith in Jesus, we still bear this image. But we also bear the terrible scars of sin. Mentally, morally, socially and physically, we carry and show the effects of sin. As wonderful as this life is, and, uh, you know, I loved my life before I became a Christian. I became a Christian at the age of 25. And I, and I loved my life um, very, very much. But I carried the marks of sin. The good news is that when God redeems a man or a woman, 
he begins to restore the original image of God, creating a new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4, 24, we're coming to a close now. Ephesians 4, 24. And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. In March 1970, as I've told you so often, I came into a meeting, not looking for God, not even knowing whether God existed, with no sense of my own sin, no sense that I needed God, no sense of, I, 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 I wasn't an alcoholic or an addict or... You know, I, I was in desperate need. I had a good job in London, enjoyed myself, um, had, had a, 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 a career that I, I really, I really loved. Um, and I wasn't even looking for God. And I came into that meeting completely unsaved, not knowing a verse of scripture or, or, or a single Christian song. And I left that meeting born again, a child of God, and, uh, and, and redeemed. And yet, I had so much to learn. You know, I didn't go out of that, that uh, uh, church that evening. I couldn't have gone out of church that evening and had a spiritual conversation with you about the grace of God and about how, how God has elected us. And I, I couldn't speak, be, speak about Romans and what a great book Romans is. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't have even be begun to speak on the level that we can speak on in TRC. But I was on the way. It was a beginning. And just as sin uh, came into the world and, 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 and destroyed us, so this, um, this redemption this bearing the image of, of God again, this, uh, this uh, beginning to restore us to the original image of God, a new self, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time to be righteous. It takes time to be holy. It takes time for some of the things to, to drop off. And I'm not talking now about legalism. You know, whether we can watch football or, you know, whether we can listen to pop music. I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about the things that, um, that, that stamp us as different, as other, as Christians. And it takes time for them to, to, to fall off. But this redemption is only available through God's grace, through faith. In Jesus. Christ is our Saviour from the sin that always separates us from God. Again in Ephesians, the great book of the church. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It is the grace of God. And through Christ, we have experienced this, this wonderful change in our lives and in our hearts. And we may look at ourselves and think, I haven't come very far. We may think that we haven't really come very far as Christians. I would just say, uh, no, I, I, I'm not saying to do this. Please do not do this. But at least you would find out this way. If you think that you're not a good Christian, if you think, or, or even doubting whether you are a Christian, I suggest you go to some place where there's no Christians. Go to some place where it's just full of unbelievers and you will feel mighty uncomfortable. You will not feel comfortable again. I remember going to my first football match after being, uh, being saved. And you know I love football. And I went to my first football match. And I could not believe the language that I, I'm hearing. You know, I, I've been going to football since I was four. My dad took me to the first match at Dagenham when I was four. I've been going 
and took from four to twenty-five. Never ever bothered me. Here I am, I've only been saved a month, and I go to a football match, and the language, it, 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 it upset me. It upset me. Because I'm a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And as we preach in this church, and as, as Shur said so well, there is not one of us without sin in this church. We are sinners saved by grace. There's not good Christians or, 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 or bad Christians. We are all sinners. And uh, your sin may be different to my sin. And my sin might be different to your sin. But there is no one perfectly in this church. We are sinners saved by grace. Your pastor is a sinner saved by grace. Your pastor is a, a sinner uh, born in, in, in total depravity who has been redeemed but still has to fight this sinful nature. But even so, we are new creations in Christ Jesus. The old has gone and the new has come. And we can never be the same again. Father, we thank you that we are created in your image and in your likeness. And even though, Lord, at the, the fall of man, that image was so badly scarred, so badly marred, that, Lord, it was almost destroyed, and yet not quite. Not quite. Because, Lord, we still know what we are missing. We still know, Lord, that... Even at our very best in this world, there is a lack, there's a hole, there's a something, Lord, lacking in us that we are searching for. And even though we don't know it is you, Lord, Lord, we just know that there is still something of that image in every man and every woman. But until, Lord, you call us to yourself, until, Lord, you bring us to yourself, we will remain in our sin. But I thank you, Lord, that you could not do that. You could not leave us in our sin. And Jesus came, was born as a man, suffered as a man, died as a man. And Lord, we just thank you that because God became a man and you took upon yourself, Lord Jesus, our, our humanity in perfect form, we thank you that you have clothed us with your deity. You have renewed us. You have restored us. We are born again. We are now new creations. The old has gone. The new has come. And one day, Lord, we will be perfect. With a new, perfect, resurrected body. Just like yours. But until that day comes, we thank you. We have your word. We have your spirit. And Lord, we have the wonderful church. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.